chief of police of Tokyo had been kidnapped by the most ruthless psychotic villain ever known, called the master alias Lord Nemesis. And his officers had just been given a tip off on the location and whereabouts of their boss. The funny side is that Lord Nemesis is awaiting the arrival, for he is not afraid of any challenge from anybody. They were sure that this was the right location and they were well prepared for Lord Nemesis, for he was a turn in the flesh for Tokyo's police department in committing heinous crimes by poisoning the Oguchi Reservoir, the gas attack on the Tokyo Dome, and the theft of the Kusanagi, a legendary Japanese sword. They were close to rescuing their boss. They were right in the building they believed he was held in, but there was a problem. The problem was that they should have double checked the tip off they were given, for it was a decoy to their death. They were in the wrong building, rigged with Lord Nemesis's explosives. As they busted into the room filled with explosives, the time bomb went off and the explosion killed all the police officers trying to rescue the chief of police. Letting the chief of police know the predicament befalling his officers as he began to taunt him of being incapable of overcoming or apprehending him. For he was Lord Nemesis and ruthlessness was his identity as the chief of police begged for his death and cursed at Lord Nemesis. At first, the chief of police didn't know where he was but realized that they were in a train tunnel close to where his men were murdered by Lord Nemesis and he had been beaten black and blue by Lord Nemesis's gang of thugs whom he had hired to cause disruption and commit crimes in the city of Tokyo. Lord Nemesis had caused many atrocities unknown to man and this wasn't his first rodeo. He had been going to the capital of each country with a low crime rate to cause destruction by increasing the crime rate and killing the chief of police of that city which spanned from China to Singapore to Hong Kong and even not Korea for he was the talk of the town and everyone around the world dreaded the day he embarked on their city. I mean this crazy psychotic unknown maxed man committed this crime for no reason or ideology to back it up for he is not a matter far from it and I want you to know that Lord Nemesis is no ordinary man for he is an unknown billionaire who is an adrenaline junkie. With the help of science and technology, he was able to augment his cells plus his DNA to make him super fast and super strong. And not only that, he was efficient and proficient in martial arts of all kind, be it karate or kung fu. Bring it on! Before a bruised and battered chief of police knew what was happening, he was squashed by an oncoming train. But our dear Lord Nemesis didn't leave it at that as he had already rigged the train track which made the train to derail and smash into buildings people were in and they met their debts and it was a lot of debt which he was delighted in for all his dastardly plans came to fruition without fail and his next point of call is the United States of America for he has an admiration for the chief of police of the city of Washington and he believes he deserves a visit from him for he was impressed with the good works of Blake Moreau which spells disaster. Blake Moreau was a maverick and was not your typical sit in the office kind of guy or stand by the side chief of police. He was always part of the action behaving like a typical American cop and a modern day Clint Eastwood. He would do anything to protect the lives of citizens and with a passion he loves his job. Blake Moreau is a pious strict Christian by nature. He is married with two children and faithful to his wife and family and with him being the chief of police of Washington the city experienced a meager crime rate for he stamped on crime like a ton of bricks which got Lord Nemesis's attention. After he took care of a hostage situation with his partner and personal assistant Sergeant Lee he got a visit from the FBI. They have come to warn him that he's on the kill list of the notorious Lord Nemesis, also known as the Master. He had sent a memo to Blake Moreau that by the 12th of March at midnight, he was going to end his life. And that was a promise in which Lord Nemesis never fails. This got the attention of the Chief of Police, for he knows Lord Nemesis's modus operandi, where he arrives at the city with a low crime rate, then sends a memo to the Chief of Police of that city promising to kill him at the end of his fulfilled mission. Hire some 
local thugs of that city by promising to pay them millions and millions of dollars and make them commit crimes in every nook and cranny of the city. And not just any crime, I mean devastating crimes that cost lives. And as his newfound obsession, Blake Moreau was the perfect match. For this will be a battle of wits. He loves to humiliate pious men like Blake for his decency, which he qualifies as pomposity. Knowing this was true, the chief of police immediately ordered his partner, Sergeant Lee, to make a meeting with his most trusted police officers in the force and told his secretary to send flour to his wife, Peggy, and with immediate effect, put his wife in police custody. It is known that Lord Nemesis has a habit of harming the families close to law officers. The president of the United States of America was arriving from an overseas trip on the Air Force One plane and they were about to land in Washington. Suddenly, both the two jets manning the Air Force One exploded. Every passenger in Air Force One was shook by the explosion, causing a ripple effect that shook the plane as Lord Nemesis landed on the plane's wings, running towards the cockpit. As the president and his bodyguards could hear someone running on the roof of the aircraft. Without seeing him coming, the pilots were shocked to see Lord Nemesis with a submachine gun. And before you could say, who shot John? He fired at them without remorse and took control of the plane. At the same time, the president and his men were novices to what was going on, for they believed they were going to crash. For Lord Nemesis was nose diving the plane at a fast speed towards the street of Washington and not listening to the emergency warning from the air traffic control. In fact, he used the wings of the plane to crash into the air traffic control and landed the plane on the moving traffic road of Washington. He crashed into anything and anyone on his way as the crowd of innocent citizens took to their heels, screaming for their lives. One of the bodyguards gave the president cover to protect him from death and injury, while Lord Nemesis continued to do more damage on the streets of Washington, killing people left, right and center. No one was exempted. It was a fiasco of doom. Explosions everywhere. Cars smashing into one another. People were confused and had nowhere to run. It was a death in a thousand. It wasn't funny. The people of Washington didn't know what hit them. Was the president of the United States of America was nowhere to be found. He just vanished into thin air. Out of nowhere, there was a live broadcast from Lord Nemesis, sending a direct message and challenge to the chief of police of Washington, stating that his coming to Washington was a personal vendetta on behalf of his family when he was a child, and that if the chief of police got his memo, he promised to end his life at the appointed time, that he was the black sheep of the family, and he was going to burn the city to ashes for the chief of police, Blake Marrow, was incompetent so incompetent he couldn't protect his town or his boss, the President of the United States of America. And beside, Lord Nemesis was a bruised and battered President of the United States of America on his knees for all eyes to see. 20 years ago, when Blake Moreau was still a younger police officer, he was investigating the Andersons, a wealthy tycoon family for child trafficking, which involved the kidnapping of runaway teenagers who are used for hunting games. And this had been going on for years. Blake Moreau was going for the head of the Anderson family and his wealthy associates like him. In fact, the evidence against him was overwhelming. And when Blake Moreau and his officers came to harass him, not being able to face the shame he had brought to the family name, he took the easy way out by ending his own life by hanging himself as his son witnessed his death. In retrospect, this was Lord Nemesis relating the story live on air for the whole world to hear. It was a big scandal for the Anderson family. No one would do business with them and the Anderson empire was crumbling. Plus, life was unbearable for young Matthew Anderson, whom Lord Nemesis claimed to be. The worst part for Matthew Anderson was that his mother was also involved in kidnapping runaway teenagers for hunting games and was immediately sent to the electric chair to face death for her heinous crimes. But young Matthew Anderson was later adopted by the new head of the Anderson family, his saintly, self-righteous, God-fearing, staunch Catholic uncle Howard Anderson. And Howard Anderson tried his best to put young Matthew Anderson on the straight path. But as they say, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. After after a while, young Matthew Anderson was bored of his uncle's holy adult behavior, which led him to run away from home and travel the world with his little 
through inheritance. On his way, he met the violent, sadistic, megalomaniac, deranged, insane individuals, or should I call them criminals? He taught him all the vilest things you ever teach a child his age. By the age of 12, he was a gang lord. At 15, he was the largest exporter of illegal drugs in Asia. And at 23, he was the head of an ancient death cult from Iran, once Mesopotamia. Now, he is back home to honor his mother's dying wishes, which was to avenge and kill Blake Marrow for the death of his parents. You should be aware that when Lord Nemesis is committing crimes, it is viewed live worldwide, for he attaches recording cameras to his mask for all to see. And his memo operandi is that he goes into a city that has the lowest crime rate, then he hires the best of the best criminals in that city to cause a lot of disruption by committing crimes in different locations of the city by promising to pay them millions and millions of dollars. And don't forget, Lord Nemesis is no matter for his proficient in every step he takes as he trusts no one. No one knows his hideouts. Even his hired thugs don't know the location of their hideout for they were blindfolded to the place. Lord Nemesis was meticulous, so he was always five steps ahead of his adversaries. It's like he's writing a script directing the motion of things and knowing how it will end without fail. He was like the Nostradamus of villains. Lord Nemesis is so benevolent with his act of criminality that before committing any atrocity, he releases a riddle that must be solved before a deadline given. And before committing crimes, he waits a while to see if the chief of police is smart enough to solve his puzzles. And if he doesn't solve it by the deadline, he and his hired thugs strike. And they strike hard. This was hard and tense for the chief of police, Blake Moreau. As he gets closer to apprehending Lord Nemesis and his hired thugs, it comes to fail. And this is frustrating for him. Question, what gets wet when dry? Answer, an explosion at the Redskin Stadium. And this act by Lord Nemesis and his hired thugs cost a lot of lives. Question, the more you take, the more you leave behind. Answer, the theft of the Hope Diamond, as this diamond was extracted from India and it's worth $300 million. Question, what fastens two people but catches one? Answer, the battered bodies of two spinsters. Lord Nemesis and his hired thugs turned the city of Washington red. It was a bloody fiasco, none that had been seen before. Lord Nemesis was unpredictable. Despite him giving clues to his crimes, his arrogance was next to none and he left the chief of police, Blake Moreau, in a tight corner. This was frustrating for Blake Moreau and this frustration forced him to visit Howard Anderson, for which he accused him of sponsoring his nephew, Matthew Anderson, the master alias Lord Nemesis. Immediately, Howard Anderson refuted the accusation as they had been friends for the past 20 years. Not only only that, they are both Catholics and even take Holy Communion together. And you have to understand Blake Moreau's perspective, for he was his flesh and blood. And as they say, blood is thicker than water. In retrospect, Howard Anderson had spent over a billion dollars trying to make up for his brother's sin and more to wipe the stain of the family name and nothing would please him to see his nephew apprehended. Lord Nemesis's atrocities had gone far and wide and it was the talk of the news as Washington faced unpredictable terror. He had released another riddle to be solved by the chief of police and a deadline had been given. Top generals and agents from top security agencies held a meeting in the Pentagon and some of the generals who were paranoid had the suspicion that Howard Anderson might be hiding Lord Nemesis for in our reality, he was his flesh and blood. Still, the chief of police assured them that there wasn't any clue that led to the Andersons, for they were as terrified as everyone in Washington. Since they don't know the true identity or whereabouts of Lord Nemesis, Blake Moreau suggests that the whole city be wiretapped, just in case one of his higher thugs slipped up on the phone. And as they tried to get closer to the clues of Lord Nemesis's next target, most of them in the room got the answer wrong and time was taken. And suddenly, the chief of police, Blake Moreau, solved the riddle, for the answer was the Pentagon. And before he could finish his statement and explain how he arrived at the answer, everyone in the room began to fall to their death. They were choking. The only two standing was Blake Moreau and his partner, Sergeant Lee. It gets worse. Everyone in the Pentagon began to fall to their death. This mystified Blake Moreau and his partner, for they couldn't comprehend what was happening around them right in front of his very face people were dropping like flies as lord nemesis and his higher thugs pumped and released nerve gas into the pentagon 20,000 employees 
died instantly. No one in the Pentagon was exempted as the chief of police and his partner in a frantic effort tried to help their colleagues but to no avail. Everybody around them was dying and right in front of them was Lord Nemesis standing by his hired thugs and telling the chief of police not to bother for he couldn't save any of them because he pumped nerve gas through the building of the Pentagon. Blake Moreau and his partner Sergeant Lee began to shoot at them but again to no avail for Lord Nemesis was protected by a bulletproof glass shielding him and his men as he has complete control of the computerized system of the Pentagon. Who told him that the reason he was alive was that this morning he had sneaked in antidotes to their morning coffee and had promised that he would surely die at the appointed time given. The nemesis not only killed 20,000 employees of the Pentagon but he also hacked into the system and spread every secret of the Pentagon all over the internet plus the nuclear codes. Blake Marrow was livid as he promised to bury Matthew Anderson but as usual Lord Nemesis taunted the chief of police for being incompetent and not smart enough to apprehend him and this was a massive defeat for Blake Moreau. So at this point the chief of police decided to change his strategy for chasing after Lord Nemesis who will be time wasted and trying to wiretap the whole of the city to get a slip up was also a waste of time. The best next thing is to give in to Lord Nemesis's desire more like throwing a bait to a fish in the river. Now at home things went rosy for the chief of police had to divide his family into different locations in fear that Lord Nemesis doesn't get to them and the news was this four-year-old girl needed a heart transplant and lucky enough for the girl a heart was found and the operation was supposed to take place but unfortunately for the four-year-old girl Lord Nemesis went and stole the heart as expected. This was a bait to lure out Lord Nemesis from his hiding since his whereabouts is difficult to ascertain and before Lord Nemesis could know what was happening there were police forces everywhere to his dismay helicopters were tailing him close as he was fired upon from every possible angle in the car he was driving in there was no escape there were roadblocks and the police force was ready and well prepared for lord nemesis the police force didn't consider that lord nemesis is no ordinary criminal for in this situation a hardened criminal would have given up and waved the white flag not taking any chances lord nemesis mechanically ripped his car in two by minimizing it into a super bike as he jumped in the air and fired upon those police cars and officers standing in his way. He killed them all as the explosion was enormous. Still, he was being chased by helicopters from the air that had blocked him near the river, believing that they had trapped him and he had nowhere to go. But as I said before, Lord Nemesis is no ordinary criminal. In a blink of an eye, not expecting it, Lord Nemesis used his superbike to project himself by backflipping into the air while holding a rocket launcher as he fired at the helicopter and before they knew what hit them, it was over as the aircraft exploded in mid-air. Lord Nemesis dived into the river. He swam deep beneath the waters as he found a tunnel that led to the city's underground with the heart transplant in hand. Using a flashlight, it was easy for him to navigate where he was going and at the same time was communicating with his hired thug called Gas Pipe, telling him to buy more cars from his dealership and that he should remember to feed the President of the United States of America for he needs him alive for the appointed time he will eliminate the Chief of Police Blake Moreau. Finally, he asked Gas Pipe if he had located the whereabouts of Blake Moreau's children but the answer was negative. Even Johnny, one of his hired thugs, couldn't find them. Taken he had escaped the wrath of the police, Lord Nemesis climbed out of one of the manholes on the street with a heart transplant in hand and to his dismay he was surrounded by the police force with no escape for him as he was trapped and cornered and before he could move a muscle, Blake Moreau knocked his jaw out with the butt of his gun. Blake Moreau let Lord Nemesis understand that the heart he was carrying around with him was a pig's heart and that there was a tracking device which was how they located where he is and that he is not as bright as he makes out to be. Lord Nemesis who was never shot for words, relentlessly told Blake Moreau that this was all his plans and everything was falling into place just like he had orchestrated. The world's most notorious theatrical dramatic super criminal had left a trail of dead bodies across Asia. Still, his ultimate target was Blake Moreau, the chief police officer of Washington and he blamed him for destroying his childhood. 
and vengeance was the prize. After kidnapping the President of the United States of America and murdering the entire Pentagon staffs, Lord Nemesis is under police custody. However, Lord Nemesis claimed it was all part of an elaborate plan, a plan that will get him closer to ending the life of Blake Moreau at the appointed time given, which is the 12th of March at midnight. Preparation was made to take Lord Nemesis to a well-secured prison, the North Branch Correctional Institution, and I must let you know that the prison guards were terrified of his coming, for they know his capabilities, as Lord Nemesis is no ordinary criminal. Now, Lord Nemesis's identity is still being determined, for they were curious if he is really Matthew Anderson. And moreover, it was impossible to take off his mask, for he had rigged his disguise as a booby trap with tiny explosives. Most importantly, they must still interrogate him to know the president's whereabouts. Every top dignitary worldwide paid tribute to Blake Moreau for apprehending Lord Nemesis, alias the master. Even his uncle, Howard Anderson, a friend of the chief of police was pleased and paid tribute to his success in arresting his nephew. There was happiness and relief in the air. The news of Lord Nemesis's arrest went far and wide, leading to Blake Moreau's family being released under police protection. And it was all over the news as his wife Peggy also paid tribute to her husband for his bravery and asked the press to respect their privacy. When the guards with a bind Lord Nemesis got to the correctional facility, he couldn't keep it shut. He was mouthing off, telling them that what was about to happen was no other than the chief police's fault. If he had just left his eccentric father from doing strange things, his childhood might have been better. He told them that he would burn Washington to the ground, that the president would die, and that they were living a false hope if they thought these chains would hold him down or stop him from his next act. At the same time, the chief of police was speaking at a press conference to confirm that Lord Nemesis had been apprehended and that they were getting close to finding the president location. Lord Nemesis's gang of thugs was still on the loose, but it posed no public risk according to the source he was given. But to be frank and to be honest, the source was wrong, for Lord Nemesis's gang of thugs had already infiltrated the correctional facility and also rigged the correctional facility with explosives and killed everyone in the IT department, which was where the controller room of the facility was located. Unknowingly to the prison guards, the prison had been subtly taken over by Lord Nemesis's gangs of thugs. And even up to now, Blake Moreau still relied on the source given that Lord Nemesis's gang of thugs were irrelevant without their leader. Little did he know, Lord Nemesis ordered Johnny, one of his thugs in the controller room, to switch off the facility's light. And before the guards surrounding Lord Nemesis knew what was happening, they were fired upon and gunned down by an imposter among them who was initially working for Lord Nemesis. Lord Nemesis ordered the lights to be switched back on and told the imposter to release him from his bind position. At the same time, Johnny warned Lord Nemesis that about a hundred guards were coming in his direction and asked if he should open the prison cells to release prisoners to distract them from his escape. Still, Lord Nemesis told him not to do that, for he could take care of himself by dealing severely with the upcoming aggressive guards and he wanted to teach them a lesson they would never forget. Not holding back, Lord Nemesis launched himself and dived towards the crowd of guards approaching him and he told his gang of thugs that he was fine on his own. He was fast and strong and the guards didn't know what was coming for them for he was relentless in his aim and he did it without remorse and when he struck he went for the kill. Lord Nemesis is not only a super criminal but also a theatrical entity and a perfect villain. Everything to him is a performance for all to see, a typical show off, a dramatic rebellious nuisance without a cause and a turn in the flesh to societies. He was unpredictable and chaotic, a nightmare to all who crossed his path and brought fear to those that underestimated him and the guards didn't know the hurricane that hit them for he was ripping through them like scissors cutting through paper. Lord Nemesis wasn't holding back, anything or anyone he touches dies and the guards, mostly men, wept in severe pain to their death. They screamed as they were mutilated by the theatrical giving an excellent performance of bone cracking, choking and neck twisting. Lord Nemesis used
uses the guards' batons as weapons against them. It was a painful experience for the guards and a horror show for the prisoners in their cells, for they had never seen anything like this. It was monstrous, grotesque, hideous, gruesome, appalling, abhorrent, and abominable. Even for the heartless criminals in prison, Lord Nemesis conquered them all. According to Shakespeare, hell is empty and the demons are here. But I say it takes only one demon to bring hell on earth. When Lord Nemesis killed all the guards, he told Johnny to release all the prisoners. All the prisoners ran out of the prison and to top it all, Lord Nemesis gave each prisoner a car to drive away in. Remember that Lord Nemesis's gangs of thugs rigged the prison with explosives. Well, as soon as everyone left, the correctional facility exploded, killing all the guards in prison. Still celebrating the capture of Lord Nemesis, the chief police got the news that had gone down in the correctional facility as Lord Nemesis and his gang of thugs had killed all the staffs, released all the prisoners, about 2,000 of them, on the streets of Washington and blew up the correctional facility to the high heavens. Break Moreau realized that Lord Nemesis intentionally got himself arrested. He instructed his men to contact his wife Peggy and arrange for his family to receive police protection. Unfortunately, it was already too late. Although his wife Peggy was safe, his children, the boy and the girl, had mysteriously disappeared without a trace. At the police headquarters, an hour later, Blake Moreau and his wife Peggy got a recorded tape from Lord Nemesis, letting the chief of police know that his gang of thugs kidnapped his children and this was his demand from the chief for if he didn't comply, he would send his children to him in bottles. Lord Nemesis wants the chief of police, Blake Moreau, to reveal his three big family secrets. And just in case Blake Moreau doesn't know what he's talking about, he can ask his beautiful wife Peggy. Then Lord Nemesis told him he will be calling him tonight to get his answers. Later that night, Lord Nemesis called as promised. No matter how they tried to track his call, it was still impossible to locate his location. For Lord Nemesis was the most evasive, villainous villain of all time. It was like he was writing a script. Who knew the beginning and the end of each chapter of events? Lord Nemesis demanded the three big secrets be revealed, starting from his wife's indiscretion, for he had all the facts, referring to Peggy if she told her husband, Blake Moreau, everything. Peggy begged him to return their children. And you should know that whatever secrets Lord Nemesis demands from the chief of police is a way to embarrass him publicly, a way to strip him of his dignity. The first secret was that after Blake and Peggy got married, Peggy had a sexual relationship and a romantic affair with his old partner, Milt Daniels for 18 straight months. She considered leaving him at a point, but Milt Daniels broke it off as he was getting married to another woman. And then Lord Nemesis asked him why he thought his wife had started this relationship. Blake Moreau confessed that he was an inattentive husband who neglected his wife because he was too focused on his career. He was also unable to satisfy his wife sexually. And Blake Moreau's second secret is that his son is a homosexual. Again, Lord Nemesis asked him why he wasn't privy to this information. Was it because he would be disgusted due to him being a Catholic? Blake Moreau told him that his son was scared of revealing his sexual identity because he thought he would hate him, but he would never hate his son, no matter what. And the third secret is that his daughter got pregnant and had an abortion without telling him because she wanted to go to college to further her career and she knows he would disapprove. Satisfied that he had humiliated the chief of police and rattled him emotionally by revealing his family secrets to the world just like he disgraced his father and family in the past. He kept to his word and released the children in a truck outside the police headquarters without a scratch. So they thought. Not too long, Lord Nemesis released news online that Blake Moreau's daughter was pregnant for his homosexual brother, his son. And when the doctors tested his daughter, they found out that Lord Nemesis practiced artificial insemination on Blake Moreau's daughter, in which they found out that she was pregnant for Lord Nemesis had fertilized her eggs under anesthetic, but he also added something in the procedure which had never been seen before, as he rigged her womb, which made it impossible for abortion. And if abortion is attempted, her womb will collapse and she wouldn't be able to have any offsprings. This news made his wife extremely mad, for she blamed him for their family's predicament, citing that he was selfish and only cared about his job. 
But hey, wait a minute, that's rich coming from her. Wasn't she the one who was ramping her way into bed with his former partner? Anyways, Blake Moreau told his partner, Sergeant Lee, to get him one of the best undercover cops in Washington by the name of Alex Kirby, who had done some robberies with Lord Nemesis's gang of thugs. But when it came to a critical mission, Lord Nemesis uses his favorite. Blake Moreau made him understand that he is not judging him for his actions. For as an undercover cop, sometimes you are forced into a situation where you get your hands dirty. Through all of this, Alex Kirby got the addresses of the gangs of thugs involved with Lord Nemesis, including the super criminal's hideout, even his identity, and Blake Moreau had always had his suspicion about this suspect, and he and his men were going out to get him this time. Alex Kirby informed Blake Moreau that the super criminal Lord Nemesis is identified as Howard Anderson, Matthew Anderson's self-righteous uncle. Blake Moreau now understands that Matthew Anderson had been disguising himself as his uncle as he and his team are currently heading towards Howard Anderson's mansion to capture Lord Nemesis. The notorious super criminal who had been a constant problem for the chief of police and a threat to society. For Lord Nemesis had abducted the President of the United States of America, executed the entire Pentagon staff, made a violent prison escape, destroyed the facility, and then proceed to kidnap the children of the Chief of Police. Subsequently, Lord Nemesis compelled Blake Marrow to divulge his deepest family secrets to the world as part of a hostage negotiation to secure the release of his children. Still, before doing that, the supervillain artificially inseminated Blake Moreau's daughter with the semen from her brother, his son. And this news was exposed all over the internet by Lord Nemesis. In all sincerity, this served as Lord Nemesis's demented theatrical prologue to his ultimate object, the assassination of Chief of Police Blake Moreau on March 12th at midnight. Upon reaching Howard's mansion, the Chief of Police and his team encircled the premises, finding it airily quiet as if devoid of any occupants. With confidence, the chief of police acknowledged their proximity. It was certain that in apprehending Matthew Anderson, suspected of masquerading as his uncle Howard Anderson, his men must then seal off all possible escape routes. Under Blake Moreau's command, his men forcefully entered Howard's mansion. Finding no one on the ground floor, the SWAT team tactically proceeded upstairs to Towards Howard Anderson's bedroom. Upon reaching his bedroom, they discovered Howard Anderson tightly bound and strapped with timed explosives. Nemesis had also booby trapped the bedroom with explosives. Before they could react or say Jack Robinson, a massive explosion occurred, leaving destruction in its wake. Limbs, severed head, and shattered bodies scattered in all directions as the powerful blast claimed the lives of nearly every one present. Amidst the chaos, Chief of Police Blake Moreau, though still alive, lost consciousness due to the impact of the explosion. Upon regaining consciousness, the Chief of Police was confronted by Lord Nemesis, who revealed that he had been masquerading as his uncle all along. Furthermore, it was disclosed that every piece of information obtained from the undercover cop Alex Kirby had been directly provided by Lord Nemesis himself. Himself. The next revelation left Chief of Police Blake Moreau bewildered, unable to phantom the existence of a mole within his department. To his dismay, it turned out to be his trusted longtime partner, Stuart Lee, with whom he had collaborated and solved numerous cases over the years. Stuart Lee's betrayal stemmed from Lord Nemesis promising him $10 million in exchange for surveillance and proximity to the Chief of Police. This arrangement had been ongoing for eight years. This revelation exposes Lord Nemesis's meticulous nature as he thoroughly studies his targets before striking, giving him a significant advantage over his adversaries. Learning this new information shakes and bewilders Blake Moreau as he suspects that Lord Nemesis desired his demise due to holding him responsible for his parents'
Nemesis' death. Without hesitation, Lord Nemesis informed Blake Moreau that he was not Matthew Anderson and that the entire charade had been a deception. For the real Matthew Anderson had passed away years ago in an Indian brothel after squandering his inheritance. The revenge plot was crafted to add intrigue before Lord Nemesis ultimately eliminates the chief of police, Blake Moreau, at the designated time. This strategy allowed Lord Nemesis to triumph over his adversaries with Blake Moreau being no exception. Assuming all was harmonious, Stuart Lee was poised to embark on a journey to Costa Rica with the grandiose prize of $10 million bestowed upon him by Lord Nemesis. However, in an abrupt twist, before he could even draw another breath, Lord Nemesis extinguished his existence by a fatal gunshot wound to his cranium. At this juncture, the chief of police, Blake Moreau, comprehends that Lord Nemesis transcends a mere psychotic megalomaniac nonentity, reveling, inflicting torment and desolation by pulverizing aspiration to insignificance, devoid of any martyrdom, revolutionary ideas, or advocacy for freedom. Lord Nemesis surpasses the depths of a terrorist, bereft of an ideology to rationalize his deranged actions. His sole intent is to disseminate anguish throughout the world. When queried about his identity, Lord Nemesis curtly declares his opulence and weariness, deeming such information the sole extent of what the chief of police ought to know or comprehend, for he is rich and bold, and that's all he has to know. The chief of police was bewildered by the craziest thing, for they were in the white house. Lord Nemesis led him to the Oval Office, where the President of the United States of America and his wife Peggy were strapped with explosives. Lord Nemesis conveyed to Blake Moreau the grim reality that he had released gas upon the entire staff of the White House, including the President's security detail. Any expectation of a swift rescue were utterly futile. Adding to his malevolence, Lord Nemesis compelled both the President and Peggy to activate each other's destruction, provide them with separate detonators. This vile cruelty was solely for his sadistic pleasure and amusement. Recognizing the president's unwillingness to activate Peggy's explosive device and Peggy's own refusal to do so, Lord Nemesis escalates the sinister game of his twisted entertainment. He relinquished the control to the chief of police, Blake Moreau, compelling him to decide between the president of the United States of America and his own wife, whom he was to condemn to to death. Blake Moreau found himself trapped in a harrowing quandary. Aware that the entire spectacle unfolding within the White House was being broadcasted worldwide via the internet, it was crucial to remember that the supervillain Lord Nemesis possessed a camera affixed to the lens of his mask. He issued an ultimatum, leaving the chief of police with a dire choice either make a decision or witness the simultaneous demise of both the president and his wife. As the supervillain counted, down reached for. The President of the United States of America, fueled by irritation, boldly approached Lord Nemesis and expressed regret that his younger self could have confronted the villain head on. Caught off guard, Lord Nemesis struggled to grasp the audacity of the President's words. Seizing the opportunity, the President closed the distance between them and commanded the Chief of Police to press the button. Before Lord Nemesis could comprehend the unfolding events, Blake Moreau initiated the explosives fastened to the president. Amidst a massive explosion, the chief of police instinctively shielded himself and his wife, Peggy, from the devastating blast. Meanwhile, Lord Nemesis was injured and drenched in the blood of the president. Before the supervillain could regain composure amidst the swelling smoke, Blake Moreau lunged at him, unleashing a relentless barrage of punches. Blake Moreau mercilessly pummeled Lord Nemesis. To be fair, the supervillain was already wounded. The chief of police swiftly knocked Lord Nemesis to the ground, poised to retrieve his firearm and bring an end to the villain's life. However, an overzealous police officer in a helicopter above them opened fire on both the chief of police and the supervillain. Lord Nemesis, devoid of any concern, regarded the friendly fire as a fitting retribution. Mockingly, he informed Blake Moreau that someone like him never loses, vowing to fulfill his promise of ending Moreau's life at midnight. Lord Nemesis boasted of having dispatched superior individuals than the chief of police in the past. Fortitiously, a firearm lay within their reach. Acting swiftly and decisively, they simultaneously seized the guns from the ground. In a split 
Second, they aimed the weapons at each other and without hesitation pulled the triggers. Lord Nemesis' bullet found its mark in the chief of police's chest while Blake Moreau's bullet struck the supervillain's head. In that instant, they both collapsed to the ground. As the fully equipped SWAT team arrived at the scene outside the White House, they were confronted with the sight of Lord Nemesis, lifeless and with a blown out head lying on the ground. Initially, they questioned whether he had been bluffing as he had instilled an immense sense of fear within their hearts. The SWAT team successfully rescued Peggy from the rubble. Initially, upon discovering the wounded chief of police lying on the floor, they presumed he was deceased. However, upon checking his pulse, they realized he was still breathing. Without delay, they rushed him to the hospital where he was immediately placed on the operating table for a critical heart surgery. The bullet fired by the deceased supervillain, Lord Nemesis, had dangerous neared his heart. The intricate procedure on his heart spanned several hours, during which he experienced a flat line. The doctors fought diligently to revive him. Unfortunately, his heart eventually resumed its expected rhythm. With renewed hope, the doctors proceeded with the operation, successfully extracting the bullet perilously close to his heart. Thus concluded the reign of Lord Nemesis, the notorious supervillain known as the Master. The enigma surrounding his true identity persisted, leaving everyone in the dark. His true persona remained a mystery, concealed from all. Following the successful operation, the chief of police made a remarkable recovery, regained his strength swiftly. He became a top contender for the position of the head of Homeland Security. However, he chose a different path, resigning to become a full-time parent. Together with Peggy, they lovingly adopted their daughter's triplets as their own. From that point forward, they live a contented and joyous life, experiencing their happily ever after. While happily ever after uh, might be an exaggeration, on their anniversary, the former chief of police, Blake Marrow, took his wife to a restaurant. To his surprise, a letter and a gift awaits him, a bottle of the world's most expensive wine presented by the restaurant's waiter. As Blake Marrow read the letter, a revelation unfolded before him. It revealed a grander power play behind the case of the notorious supervillain, Lord Nemesis. He received commendation for successfully defeating such a formidable adversary and was assured of his family's safety as it would be unjust for him to become a target once again. Delving deeper into the letter, it disclosed the existence of others like Lord Nemesis. He was cautioned to stay clear of Los Angeles, hinting at potential dangers lurking in that city. The strangest aspect of the letter and the gift was that they had been delivered a decade ago by an unknown individual coinciding with the very day the waiter began working at the restaurant. The mysterious circumstances surrounding the timing of the delivery added an airy layer to the situation.